Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, and talk about the fun things that we found going on in the world of open source Linux and all that other fun stuff. I'm Vin, that's Jill, and that is Pedro. And with our powers combined, we're just going to talk about the stuff that we like. Hey, what's yeah. up? What's going on? <laughs> Jill, you just got back from uh, the Fargate. Yeah, WonderCon, where I took a, uh, me and Steve husband took a picture in front of Stargate and, and put it in Discord for everyone to see. It was actually a pretty well done prop, although I've actually been in front of the real one. <laughs> and I really enjoyed uh, playing Unreal Tournament 1999 in the Friday Night Foo Bar last week. That was so much fun. I hadn't played it in years <laughs> oh, we got, since 99. <laughs> we got so retro. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm good at this game. Then everyone remembered how to play it again. I'm like, yeah, I wasn't that good at the game, but I helped my <laughs> oh. Pedro, what have you been up to, man? Well, uh, over here, I am basically waiting because supposedly I'm going to get a pay raise at the end of the month because uh, of the reworking of the uh, NHS payment methods, and I got bumped up a little notch. So, yeah, no, that, that, mm. I, I, Hoping that uh, that will be the case, so I can start saving up for that Ryzen three thousand. <laughs> mm. it it's a great time. I, I had the debate earlier this week. This is the most delete expletive bad time to try to build a computer. Like three months from now, it's going to be awesome. If you're buying a yeah. Ryzen seven <laughs> and you're looking for like a twenty seven hundred, you can get a twenty seven hundred now for. Under 300 200 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. All day long. <laughs> 210 bucks. I think it was the lowest that the 2700 got to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, good time for that. Bad time to build a workstation. Thus, I mm -hmm. found out. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what am I playing around with? I've been playing around with uh, Batman, with Lutris, doing yeah. things. I saw I the video. <laughs> yeah. Made a little that was awesome. commercial for Lutris, which just happened because I needed to actively try to crash our sound system because i was trying a new clock timing thing very scientific <laughs> and one of the best ways wibbly to, wobbly timey wimey pretty much, pretty much right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> to do that is proton or dxvk you know using the vulcan just throw it as put as much on the bus and pokey screwy things that you can and it worked out pretty well, so I had all that footage. I was like, you know what, let's cut this up, because I went and looked at some of the Batman Arkham Knight. Like, this was played with Lutris. Chop, 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 chop. Mm -hmm. like, oh. <laughs> nice. That's not good. <laughs> so we got something that looks a little bit better. All right. Oh, did everybody survive April Fool's? Did we make it through? <laughs> yes. Yes. And, I didn't fall and, for anything this year. Oh, I did. And ben, I did. Ben, well played. Well played, Ben. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? The notification, red notification dot on our our, our Discord channel. <laughs> oh, server. yeah. People were going nuts. It's like, oh, Discord is broken. <laughs> no, that's a thing that's there. <laughs> <laughs> I may or may not have had something to do with it. Uh, yes. <laughs> no, the, I, I genuinely, I got had by one. I even put it in the show notes for um, LGC Weekly was Intel's upcoming video card using mm -hmm. multiple GPUs. Mm. Well, well played. You, yes. You nailed me on that. Um, but another thing that showed up that turned out Sounds like it's April Fool's, but very well may not be. <laughs> yes. it was from before. <laughs> Edge Linux support and IE integration. Happy April Fool's, we all wish. Maybe, I don't know. I did say that this it's probably going to happen for the end of 2019. Turns out mm. in Edge, if you give it the flags command, go play with that at your own risk on Linux, we all, boom, do that to cut on hardware, um, canvas rendering, GL acceleration, mm -hmm. WebRTC, mm -hmm. and all that fun stuff. But... It will show Windows, Mac, and Linux, but Chrome OS is in there, so they've at least edited that little bit out. <laughs> kind of make that what you will, but in 2019, you know, I cannot fathom why Redmond is wasting time and resources on a browser when that effort <laughs> could be better spent porting calculators. <laughs> well, they already released the source, so I guess they're banking on the community. 
<laughs> yeah, it would be an interesting announcement to see. It's like, oh yeah, Microsoft officially confirms Edge on Linux. Yeah, <laughs> they will be bringing it. Uh, it's been confirmed that it will. The new version will be coming to Mac, but that's mm -hmm. because Internet Explorer was already available on Mac. So a, a long time sense. ago, you could imagine a, a Mac brother and sister are like, why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to be fair safari was pretty crap too <laughs> yeah yeah it was better than safari at the time yes <laughs> but we have chrome but, we have firefox yeah. and on linux it seems like every major desktop manager has some version of a web browser yeah yes well, i think you're <laughs> right chrome ben. Has epiphany. I think, you know <laughs> Yeah, and I, and I think it is going actually going to has, happen, especially now that Edge is switching to a Chromium base so that Microsoft can have their name on all the things, uh, VMs, Internet of Things, mobile, and native. And, you know, they're, they're just interested in getting their name out there. So I think this is really going to happen. <laughs> I don't, it may be a thing that happens, I just, well, I know exactly what the Linux community reaction will be. Exactly. It will be mockery, followed yes. by a sudden sense of imminent dread, it's like, oh god, what's next? Yes, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, it, it's kind of a weird thing when you look at it, though, because even yeah. Windows users, it's like, the running joke is, you know, what is my purpose? And it's like, oh, you, you install Chrome or you install Firefox, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Will you look at it? Admittedly, I tried Edge on Android because morbid curiosity got the best of mm -hmm. me. It's like, God, yeah, let's see how our <laughs> website renders. All right, let's uninstall now. <laughs> <laughs> will, yes. you, will you give this even like a cursory curiosity like poke? And like, Meh. if it I mean, comes it's... out, I will install it and give it a shot. Yeah. I probably yeah. won't use it, but I'll give it a shot. <laughs> it's be yeah. like with Vivaldi and Brave and stuff, it's just going to be more of that. It's like yeah. Oh, yeah. Job over that is exactly what it's going yeah. to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A another platform to test Jitsi on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll make Skype another Blink browser. <laughs> oh, yes. okay. Here you go. If you want to sell me, bring back, Cl give me Clippy. Give <laughs> 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 Give me Clippy. <laughs> okay. Uh, Susie. Oh, yes. So, uh, Susie is in the news because uh, their European uh, sort of uh, headquarters decided <gasps> things have been quiet around here. We should do something to stir some, uh, some things up. And they decided to make the announcement that they are currently the biggest independent Linux uh, developer out there. And it, it is true. Currently, mm -hmm. uh, with Red Hat having been bought by IBM, and um, I mean, you could make the argument that probably Google, but yeah, let's not go there. But yeah, no, currently, as independent companies go, and as Linux distro uh, developers for both desktop use and enterprise use, Suzy is actually doing very, very well. But Suzy's history is a bit spotty, when it comes to claiming independence. Yeah. Then we'll actually get into the nitty gritty of it. But this whole thing uh, screams more, why isn't anyone looking to buy us? We like money too, you guys. Come on. I don't know, man. I went back and tracked a little bit. Um, Susie was first acquired by Novell in 2004. Then Attached Mate, with Microsoft funding, bought Novell and Susie. Oh, in 2014, when Microfocus purchased, this is like a soap opera, uh, attachment. Yes. <laughs> then EQT, which was an equity firm, uh, bought it from Microfocus for $2.5 Now the equity firm has kind of set Susie free. They're like, hey, get out there, little fella, and do your thing. And if you're wondering, um, currently, like right now, IBM's acquisition of Red Hat hasn't hurt the relationship with Susie and IBM in the business sector. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, to, to show uh, Suse's growth in 2018, their revenue grew by 15% and is about to surpass the 400 million revenue mark for the first time. That, that, 
that's really huge. And almost 40% of Suisse's revenues are in North America. This is huge growth considering a few years ago, most of that revenue was from outside of the U.S. and Canada. So that was that was really huge. They were always predominant in the European countries and not here, but that has definitely changed. And now more than 300 employees have been added in the last year, and they continued to hire even more. So um, kudos to you, Suse. Awesome. <laughs> I think that's really neat. Um, thanks, Michael, for throwing that in our show notes. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was cool. And, you know, I've never really got around to, I know a couple of people that run Suzy on the desktop, and I've... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get to it. Beer. <laughs> Foxy. Foxy. <laughs> and I do have it on one of my rendering servers here. <laughs> See, that's a use that I probably wouldn't mind Susie on. Desktop <laughs> <Yeah>. use? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it can be done. I think it's perfectly... It, it's serviceable, but what I know about it is from people going, ah, something broke. Or yes. getting the call from somebody at work going, so what do you know about enterprise suits? I was like, enough to tell you to go find somebody else. <laughs> enough to tell you that you should call up Red Hat. Mm. <laughs> anyway, uh, we got some news. Uh, What's this about? about yeah, the this is awesome. The Linux Foundation announces the Linux vendor firmware service as a new project. This is really huge. Um, and Richard Hughes stated, now the LF LVFS supports firmware updates on 72 different devices from about 30 vendors and has supplied over 5 million firmware updates to Linux clients. Uh, this is amazing how quickly the LVFS adoption has grown. And mm -hmm. having this project under the Linux Foundation's umbrella is just going to increase the adoption even faster. This is really awesome. And uh, Ven had a really, really good point um, about what's happening with the, the companies and uh, the LVFS. Don't oh. accuse me of having good points. Well, <laughs> you could not have cut me deeper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> One of the good things, really, though, that we are seeing is companies and government agencies are now, like, writing in, like, must support LVFS as part of the purchase policy and the purchase contract. And that is really neat because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in 2019, firmware is not something that's like, oh, that's what it ships with. We never have to touch it again with things like Spectre Meltdown and all those other things going on, especially with, like, routers. Uh, Cisco had a big issue. Mm -hmm. get another in a long line. <laughs> <laughs> That's something people are paying attention to now, finally. Finally. <laughs> finally. Yes. We're, we're yeah. just going to pretend <laughs> IoT devices don't exist because... <laughs> All those exposed Raspberry Pis out there. <laughs> and fridges and microwaves, yeah. But uh, one of the things that this announcement from the Linux Foundation reminded me, I was like, oh, LVFS. Wasn't there like a bit of a spat between uh, LVFS and System76 mm -hmm. a while back? And then I remembered, oh, yeah, we talked about it on the show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it was specifically Richard Hughes, uh, who made a very, very inflammatory post saying, don't buy System76 PCs because uh, they are shipping their own uh, AUEFI firmware update tool. And that's bad. and That's evil. And they don't deserve your money. And then System76 came back. It's like, OK, well, we were going to use LVFS in the mm -hmm. future. Now we're not. And it got to sting a little bit that now it's like, mm. oh, official stamp of approval from the Linux Foundation. It's like, oh, crap. <laughs> Not really, though. Yeah. I'm sure System76 is like, uh, we didn't want to get in the internet slap fight in the first spot. How about we keep <laughs> on making computers? <laughs> yeah, <Yes>. that's fair. <laughs> and to be fair, option. their tool... Yeah, their yeah. tool uh, actually works really well, and it not just yeah. on their hardware. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything that is compatible that can recognize the AUEFI calls, it'll work. Yeah. Good times. Mm -hmm. Good news, everyone. Snaps are Yay. better now. Everyone use them. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> this comes from the Ubuntu blog. You can find all this in our show notes. But uh, this is from me, Gordy Reisman. Snap startup time improvements. And the big thing, apparently, one of the big issues with Snap that was causing like that hang. Well, you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about if you hit a snap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fonts. So we're caching <laughs> fonts now. 
that's the thing. FC cash, um, binaries and snap D two thirty six two onward, uh, two to six time improvement and GUI application startup times. Uh, good. Good. Let's see. What do yeah. we have here? We have, uh, tested on workstation Fedora 29 and Kubuntu 1810. So they are going like, yeah, two to six. Wow. Almost usable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it uh, still has to load all of the uh, runtime beforehand, but uh, hey, doesn't need to cache fonts every single time. Yeah. They, they did testing on a Xeon and an i3 with VS Code, which I was going to test, but I couldn't bring myself to install a Microsoft product because I'm being that type of grumpy person. But yeah, the more the more the better. I want to see improvements to Snap. I don't think Snap is baked yet. Um, yeah. It's being tested in production, but I can't really say anything to anyone testing things in production. So, <laughs> hey, you know what, Pedro? You haven't complained about something no one cares about in like 30 seconds. Go for it. <laughs> okay, so uh, how about that uh, stupid little lowercase folder that uh, it Snap D creates in the root of your home folder? It, has that been fixed yet? Because it's, it's the, not broken. Yeah, see, the single <laughs> biggest thing uh, slowing down snaps on my system is the fact that they're not installed because of that stupid little folder. That needs to change. <laughs> there, canonical, that's my rant. <laughs> yeah. I, from the bottom of my heart, Pedro. please do not change it on principle. Oh. I will just not use snaps. I refuse. <laughs> Flatbacks for the win. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, well, you know what was really interesting about these results is I was always I've always wondered why my 16 Ubuntu 16.04 box um that has slower hardware was faster at loading snaps than my my uh newly installed 18.04.2 rig. <laughs> And now I know why. It was just, you know, the way the fonts are are configured. Uh, and this uh, it is also an issue with Adobe and their programs. And Illustrator is one of the worst culprits of this. <laughs> font, slow font, time loading. Um, <laughs> just had to put that in there. <laughs> but um, this has always been my c complaint of snaps. Slower startup times and heavier on system resources. And I am so looking forward to the continued performance improvements with Snap, so I won't have to always look for the app image or flat pack alternatives. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, I, I really, you know, Snaps are so innovative, and I want it to, to continue to get better and faster, and, and so I can use it more. They're awesome. <laughs> they're there. Not on my system, they're not. Um, but that's just because... No offense to anyone is, uh, what, 19, 18, yeah, 1910? 1810. 1810. <laughs> we're working on new versions of Ubuntu right now. It's like, ah, yeah. I got upgrade. <laughs> because it was like slapdash, what was a snap or not? I was like, how come GNOME system monitors taking so long to, oh, why is that a snap? Really? Uh-uh. Nope. Yeah. Nope. We're not doing this. <laughs> we're not hunting and packing. So continued work. I'll follow it. Uh, it's Linux. Everything gets to work together, you know. So on the, I know some people's like, ah, we need one standard, but I'm also the person like, let's have a lot of standards. That works too, <laughs> as long as they all work. Yeah, together. choice yeah. is not a bad thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and uh, speaking of choice, uh, there is hmm. one of the things that uh, you often see as like a comment on a forum post or a Reddit post, which is like the list of PPAs that someone has on their Ubuntu system. And uh, this fine person or fine folk decided to, you know what, let's just put the ones we use up on a website and go to people like, look. It's it's a thing. You, this these are the PPAs we use, and you know, agree disagree. Personally, I would replace the OIBAF PPA with the Padaka Zero Stable PPA for Mesa because it's stable. It's actually built on the uh, stable Git instead of just the nightly Git. So yeah, you Feral uh, Interactive put their um, stamp of approval on that particular PPA. There's probably a reason for it. Mm. Just saying. <laughs> I don't know, man. I am an 
I know. Somebody was like, rah, my list is better. The one that you've never shared on the internet with anyone. <laughs> uh, I say that as the person who's like, my list is better, which I've never shared anything. I try to keep PPAs to an absolute minimum because mm -hmm. that is one of the biggest nightmares you can encounter when upgrading your system. Because mm -hmm. I mean, Canonical is going to be like, all right, I'm not even dealing with this and just disable everything by default. Then you can run into a little bit of dependency nightmares, or then you have to wait for those PPAs to update to the latest and greatest versions. So try to keep them all to a minimum. The only thing I will say with this is decided lack of the proprietary GPU drivers for NVIDIA. That, mm -hmm. that should be in there. Because you <laughs> yeah, want to definitely. Run, especially if you're going to be installing <laughs> Steam playing video games or yes. trying to use anything other than just your basic display. Also, maybe a Chrome PPA, because let's face it, it's Chrome. It's going to work. Uh, I like the Firefox. ESR is good. Mm -hmm. um, and I know they're definitely it's like, they're all open source and free hardware. I'm down with that, but I also need to get stuff done, too. And a lot of people screaming about that are waiting for their game to finish downloading on Steam. I was like, mm. Yeah, and a lot mm -hmm. they do specifically say this for Ubuntu or Linux Mint. They don't mention anything about Triscoll. So, yeah. Was it, <laughs> and is, is I this will a say, known problem? Yeah. Is that a disclaimer <laughs> we need to throw out more often? You're like, by the way, not for Triscoll. I don't even know what a Triscoll <laughs> is. Uh, it's the Ubuntu-based, <laughs> completely Stallman. free software uh, version of uh, Ubuntu. Oh, it's the one <laughs> yeah. with the katanas. Okay, yeah. And yes. the free software the, the flaming katanas of yeah. Stallman. Uh, yeah, and I think the reason that they didn't include the NVIDIA PPA is because of that big banner that says, do not use. <laughs> 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 As a Linux user, I would like to inform the world that has not even made me blink ever in the history of never. I, it's like, it just makes me want to use it hard. I'm going to use it on two boxes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, when do, what do we have? Up? Yeah. Oh, Wayland. Yay. Weekly Wayland. Let's sway. Yeah. Jill, are you going to tell us it's ready and we can all switch to it? Oh, yes. It's still a work in progress, but... Sway, sway, is it a sway? A sway. New project name. Time to change it. Sway is a new tiling window manager, especially made for Wayland, and has reached a 1.0 release. And it's this is wonderful. Another window manager comes to Wayland, but this is the first tiling window manager for Wayland. And I actually I love using uh, tiling window managers, and I enjoy i3. And and i3 is is one of the ones I most I use most uh, commonly now the last few years, and so actually migrating to Sway is easy because it uses the same settings and keyboard bindings as i3. Yay! And they have have quite a few uh, updates in this release, including um, for the future, uh, future third-party screen capture and video capture tools will be supported in Sway with Wayland via real-time screen capture protocol that has been developed and implemented. And this is this is awesome because all this all this can be used for all the other new user interfaces for Wayland that are coming. So this is this is great. And I'm so looking forward to playing with Sway. <laughs> It'll be fun. <laughs> it is neat. Um, mm -hmm. It looks really neat, but I'm going to be honest. And Pedro might mm -hmm. back me up. Back me up, Pedro. Uh, <laughs> tiling window managers are allergic to my workflow. <laughs> yes. 100%. <laughs> they, they are very, uh, and, you know, but honestly, uh, like until Pipewire matures and applications take advantage, of it, mm -hmm. like 90% mm -hmm. of what I do in here, I can't do in Wayland right now, which sucks because I mm -hmm. hate it when they're, and you can't really see Wayland's a new thing. It's a decade old, but I still want to play with it, but I couldn't do any work on it at the moment. Yeah. And mm -hmm. tiling window managers for me specifically, they make me feel like those people that I have to help at work mm -hmm. that have zero computer experience. And basically, it they start messing with my brain, like tiling window managers mess with my <laughs> brain that I forget the most basic of things. I mean, it's either that or the fact that 
every single one has different shortcuts for everything. Literally, yes, it's that's like everything true. is yeah. different. You say <laughs> that like it's a bad thing. <laughs> oh. Well, now that, what? you know, I3 Something has been that adopted. Makes sense, please. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> you can do that. I'm not even wondering about it. Well, yeah, I guess it was uh, when I played around with um, ah, mm -hmm. that great thing that I really loved, apparently, that I've completely forgotten the name of. What did I play around with last week, week before last? Elementary? Elementary things, man. Jeez. Mm. Yes. Oh, no, forgot. sorry. Enlightenment. Enlightenment. <laughs> Enlightenment. Elementary is yeah. a distro. Yes. I got an upgrade. I, I, saved, <laughs> I saved you that email. Well, Pager just did. Uh, <laughs> just going back to playing with a window manager from a desktop manager it was like, whoa, this has been a minute. Um, let's see if I can get used to this. <laughs> Which, I mean, it comes to like, yeah, I dig the way it meant stability. I went hat back in hand XFC and was like, I know you haven't really been updated in like four years, but you know what, little buddy? You don't crash. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and that's the thing. Like, people, uh, much like you with XFCE, people have their favorite tiling window managers. And yeah. when we, when it comes the time <laughs> to move to Wayland and everyone has to move to Wayland, never happen. It will never happen. Ten years. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> every single one of those people will make damn sure that their favorite uh, tiling window manager is available on Wayland, and if yes. it's not at the time, they will mm -hmm. make it available. Because mm -hmm. that's the kind of people we're talking about. <laughs> but you can look yeah. at the positives of tiling window <laughs> managers and non-standard desktops is it's usually very effective as people repellent. <laughs> yes. Oh, <yeah. laughs> it, it will keep your average run-of-the-mill Mac OS or Windows user off of your system. They'll sit down like, yeah. how do I do I'm not telling you. And if you break anything, you got to fix it. <laughs> very true. <laughs> See, I'm usually the first one to go, you know what? Hold on. Let me start Chrome uh, incognito mode. There you go. Go ahead. Go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> You're nicer than I am, though. <laughs> <laughs> when people do that to me, I just say, hey, Leet Haxer, you know, I, I, I've been actually I've been using tiling window managers since the Unix days. So for me, it's just natural because <laughs> uh, I'm running Flexbox right now and um, I'm used to the window managers and I've done uh, I've used awesome desktop a lot as well. <laughs> yeah, Aculus yeah, would I... like a word with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I was working with Sun, I mean, when I was working with Unix day in and day out, I mean, I used CDE. That's just what yeah, everything I worked on had. Yeah. So later on, there was GNOME too. I was violent. <laughs> Fortunately, you could still put CDE on, but Solaris was shipping with that. And it was a fugly GNOME too to go with Bigfoot in yeah. the corner. <laughs> Again, it's Linux. Use what you want. It's yes. brilliant. And yeah, Wayland, maybe before, I don't know. Okay. What do you think? <laughs> like when X becomes deprecated? When will X no, no longer oh. give it to you? <laughs> oh. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Cat's got the hands out, won some from me. Uh, okay, if we had a if we had a bin point, what do you think NVIDIA is finally going to go? Oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. At this point, I have no idea, and I honestly don't think NVIDIA will, because... It, it, hang on, hang on, difficulty multiplayer. I'm assuming it's going to be roughly 8 to 12 minutes after Intel launches their discrete GPU solution. Ah. That, Intel's going to play this to win, too. It is going yes. to be competitive with NVIDIA, and they will <laughs> under, they will lose, not lose money, but lose as much as... Yeah, they will the sell it at cost if they have to. And it to. will be and completely open yeah. source drive, and it will support Wayland out yep. of the box correctly. Oh, yes. oh yeah. And yeah. that's the thing with Intel laptops right now. And yeah, that would actually make a lot of sense. It's like, oh, Intel is pushing out GPUs, and they support that particular, uh, what do they call it? <laughs> I know that NVIDIA uses EGL streams, but uh, everyone else seems to be wanting to use SGL, the other ones. The, yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> everyone knows what yeah. you're talking about. That yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, that, that spat needs to be resolved, mm -mm. or someone with a big enough footprint needs to stroll by to get NVIDIA to go, oh, okay. 
We'll play ball. Team Blue, yes. baby. Then we're gonna have red group. Then we're gonna have Team RGB. And I'm gonna go play in traffic yeah. because that terrifies me. All right. <laughs> Last but not well, no, we got two more things. We got Android yeah. and Wayland. Oh yes. So uh if you are using Wayland, and chances are if you have uh Fedora, the latest few versions Fedor of the workstation. Lives. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. They will uh they will they will come with the uh Wayland session by default. And if you would like to run your um Android applications because you're a developer, you're an Android developer and you want to test it locally before you actually put it on some random Android device to test there. Well, the fine folks at Collabora or Collabora or however you want to say it, uh they <laughs> have basically implemented a way that you can create and simulate your own Android device with hardware acceleration. That's the big one. Uh, and they call it yes. Spurv, uh, mm -hmm. which is very similar in name to Spurv, which is the um, Vulkan memory spec. And there's a, they provide a GitLab. Uh, it's got it's the like code Spurv for Spurv. but it's had a few. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's got the code and it's got a really lengthy... Um, basically guide on how you can get everything set up and i cloned the git it's like oh okay they have a guide cloned the git started reading through the guide as the git was cloning it's like you know what i'll i'll, I'll come back later yeah you know yeah at least you didn't get like elbow deep don't you, you, know, you, then you uh, yeah like, oh, then you're halfway easy. in da, 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 da. Like, oh now it gets all effy on me ah like, oh, then you're gonna make the choice like, yeah mm. yeah no it's just i have the git clone mm -hmm. it's on the the hard drive the one last uh hard drive uh, on this box yeah. it's there <laughs> it, yeah no <laughs> i did the same thing <laughs> but the demo's running on the rdu too which is pretty neat and you know it's containerized but hey be it, it's android on wayland i mean we're going to yeah. see this convergence you know mm -hmm. getting it on mobile devices with the ability to run android vice versa is neat so, mm -hmm. mm. there you go. Right on, right on. Most definitely. Uh, Continuing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. So, containerizing Android is actually good for security, but it will make apps perform slower. Uh, but that's actually, like Ben was saying, it's it's not a bad bad thing. I mean, just to have this available on Wayland is awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I just want to thank Katana Steel and Chad for this story. This was an awesome story that we had missed. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, before we get out of here, we are going to continue our scale 17, and Vin is slowly chugging through and processing <laughs> the yes. videos. But Jill, who did you talk to? Oh, okay. This is our Scale 17X interview with Lewis Falcon, MD, president of GNU Health, which is a project of his GNU Solidaro. And Sol Solidario, uh, Pedro probably Solidario, knows how to say. Yes. So Solidario. <laughs> it's the Spanish or Portuguese equivalent to Solidary. <laughs> okay. Awesome. And so, yeah, we put the, the, the web pages um, in the show notes. So you show can notes. go to Let's the links. Check it out. Yeah. So now we're at the GNU Health booth with Lewis Falcon, MD, and he does a wonderful project, which is trying to open source the medical industry, which is something that we need so desperately. And I'm here with uh, Linux Chicks LA, Nicole, and who's also one of our patrons for Linux Gamecast as well. And, and I just wanted to, her to be with me. <laughs> so anyways, Louis, could you tell, tell us about your project? Yeah, thanks for coming, Jill. Um, New Health is uh, first and foremost a social project, okay? Um, we try to deliver freedom and equity in healthcare. And um, we, we pretty much go all over the world and whoever needs, whoever practitioner, research institution or health center that needs something to manage their daily practice, they can download new health and improve the quality of life for the people in the community. That's, yeah. that's the main idea. And um, the main focus is social medicine, you know, working on primary care, working on the socioeconomic determinants of health. But uh, we also incorporate state-of-the-art 
technology on bioinformatics, for example. Mm. Uh, so research institutions can work on cancer research and genetics and um, proteomics. Um, again, uh, providing a framework for scientists yeah. that want to find cure for rare diseases or cancer. Yeah, and, and um, intercommunication between all the offices. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. one of the things that we uh, have brought on one of the latest uh, versions is the federation. So the new health federation allows you to um, deploy large uh, networks ac across a, a state or across a country where the data that is collected today on Health Center A is immediately on Health Center B. So your health and demographics is always going to be up to date. Yeah. No need to be creating again, exactly, yeah, you know, from forth. one back and forth. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. It's so needed. Yeah. And I know they're doing a lot of this electronically, but it's proprietary. Absolutely. And so. And, and that's one yeah. of the biggest keys here, privacy. Uh, yeah. You know, you cannot store medical information on a software that is closed source because you it's pretty much a black box. You don't know where that information is going afterwards. Yeah. Uh, we need free software because of many reasons, but one of them is privacy and security. Yes. And the other reason is, um, you know, if, if we talk about public health, this is our money, you know, it's public code. So might as well uh, make it freely available for the people. I mean, yeah. health is a non-negotiable human right. Yes. You cannot be in the hands of exactly. corporations that they are not very into your health care but into making money yeah. and and health is a human right after all you know exactly so that's what we try to do uh, to to provide an alternative to governments and to health institutions to use free software as a philosophy in healthcare. it's of course it has really cool technology about it inside it but it's more important the philosophy behind it the philosophy behind it again it's providing freedom to the people, to the practitioners, and the power of saying, no, this is my software now. Mm, I don't yes. have to pay license. I don't depend on this company's faith. Exactly. You know? So yeah. uh, it's, it's, um, it's been 13 years yeah. uh, since the very first project on GNU Solidario, and 10 years, over 10 years of uh, GNU Health. And, um, yeah, we're very happy to be oh. here. This is just such an awesome project, one I've always felt very passionate about. And Lewis here has been a friend of ours at the Linux Chicks and Scale for, for years. Yeah. We've been good yeah. friends. And I just, it's, it's, it's something that we desperately meet, need to get rid of the red tape for things to happen quicker, you know, for, for your health so you're not sitting around waiting for a surgery. Right, right, you know? right, right, yeah. right. And, 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 yeah. And, and work on this concept of preventive medicine. Exactly. You know, the, in, in the Western uh, society, we are so used to reactive medicine, to the system of disease, where uh, we as physicians have to deal with people that are sick. It would be much better if we yeah. work more on health promotion and disease prevention, exactly. and then people will be healthier. Exactly. You know, but. Uh, exactly. That's also one of the big uh, focuses of New Health, you know, primary yeah. care, preventing the community to become sick in the first place, you know. So it's, it's much more than just technology. There is a lot of philosophics be behind this. Oh, you know? definitely. That's what we try yeah, to do. Yeah, whole health. Whole yeah. health. What is your biggest barrier of getting this software in the hands of those who need it? And how can we, as a community, help with that obstacle? Well, uh, the biggest barrier probably is um, the governments, you know. Um, when, the, when you put something that is free software as in freedom, um, some of them might be a bit scared because of all this fear, uncertainty and doubt that the big companies have been uh, uh, talking about 
Um, and also, people don't know about GNU Health as much as we wish. Yeah, yeah. Especially in the Western societies, you yes. know. Um, we need, as, as a community, to talk to our politicians and telling them, if you want my vote, please use free software exactly. in healthcare. You know, yes. I think that that would be a great point. Talk to them, you know. Uh, uh, and also, within the community, I think that we have to break this concept of free software, nerds, code. It's much more than that. Wow. And uh, there are so many things uh, just documenting the system, yeah. uh, telling people, hey, go to this page and read, not read the details, don't read the, the installation instruction, read the philosophy behind it. And then, no matter whether you are a health practitioner or, 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 or student, or a researcher then say, hey, now I can match the two things, you know. Okay. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. All right. That was cool. I'm glad everybody enjoyed that. Uh, you had a <laughs> yeah. good time at scale. We got a bunch of oh, other yeah. people that you had a chance <laughs> to talk to. Mm -hmm. And they Definitely. will be showing up in the upcoming <laughs> week. So we want to thank Lewis for taking the time for that. But yes, we got to do a little bit of shameless self promotion. <laughs> hey, if you want to help us yes, uh, keep the do. lights on, check it out. LinuxGameCast.com forward slash support. We got Patreon. You get access to our live audio streams, uh, pre pre super shows, and your own custom RSS feed, and a gang of other rewards, limited to, and not including apps. I'm just kidding, totally including <laughs> access to our Discord. That's where we hang out the other six days of the week. Warning, you will make friends in there. It's kind of brilliant. Um, it's been a great tool mm -hmm. for us to finance wacky, wacky adventures with. Uh, mm -hmm. What else do we have? We got, I'm building a workstation and I've ran out of <laughs> thread ripper buttons. <laughs> I'm done. Yes. I'm all out. I like, I, see, couldn't even come up with one for that one. Uh, <laughs> we have a uh, merchandise, confuse people, confuse your friends, and uh, put stickers that say, oh, no. She's like, what's that about? And like, I don't even know. They told me to buy it. And uh, <laughs> it's ironic. It is. It's brilliant. <laughs> and uh, we just put all this back into the show. This is a pretty fun adventure. Pretty interesting structure we got put together. I want to thank everybody <laughs> for making that possible. All right. Ooh, yeah. pie. <laughs> Let's bring it. <laughs> mm, delicious, delicious. Yay. Pie. Yummy. Mm, look at it. <laughs> I love this picture. Is awesome. <laughs> So this is awesome. This is, um, <laughs> excuse me. This is Ubuntu Mate Bi Bionic Beta One for the Raspberry Pi. Yay! And in this re release, we have accelerated hardware video decoding in VLC and accelerated hardware video decoding and encoding in FFmpeg. That's really really awesome. And the Steam app, Link app is available for install. And thank you for Wimpy and crew for the Ubuntu Mate project. It is, it's just mm -hmm. nice to have another distro that competes with Raspbian and performs as well. It performs very, very well. And yeah. it is a little uh, bit heavier because yeah. it is running little, Mate yeah, <laughs> instead mate. of just LXD. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and having the Steam Link app available is awesome. But yeah, Raspbian already has that. <laughs> it, it, that's basically the default yeah. iOS. <laughs> It's just like, I wish there was something else because, yes, uh, having the hardware accelerated encoding and decoding, that's awesome. Yeah. That's actually Amazing. really awesome. Yeah. Uh, but it, it needs more. You know, despite mm -hmm. Pedro's irrational <laughs> hatred for the color green. Um, <laughs> yeah, it ne also needs to be less green. <laughs> more green. Twice the green. I, nine shades. I don't know if, like, invent shades of green if you have to put them on there just to irritate Pedro. <laughs> It's a very good project, very good, uh, just solid. So mm -hmm. the VLC acceleration, like if you're, if you're doing it just because that's how you roll and you're doing a desktop on a Pi or you are like in a situation like, man, this is all I got. That's very handy to have there. And hey, man, maybe mm -hmm. you can get away with a little bit of like uh, playing around with HTCP type stuff. You're like, hey, look, I can play something over at 720p. I think a Pi can do 1080p, right? Yeah. Like a B3. It can. Yeah. yeah. No, the, uh, the um, HDMI can push 1080p 60. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're 
probably going to be emulating something mm-hmm. from the Master System era to be able to push 1080p 60 out of it. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can use the ASCII render. Yes, oh, you yeah. can. Or the CACA. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is oh, Lip Kaka. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always love that one. Wake up, Pedro, because that's what this would be saying. Raspberry Pi Word <laughs> Clock. Um, Jura Henry uh, put this together. This is an imager, but he's got a guide of this is like a block of text, but he'd be like, hey, man, it's 20 till 9 dot o'clock. <laughs> and this is really neat. I was like, yes. oh, man, pretty cheap to build together. You can throw some LEDs in there, just simple controller, Pi Zero, and apparently Michelob Ultra, because that is the science. The cats are there to hold the hot that, glue. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not going to say a word, man. That That's classy compared to some of the things I've done around this house, man. Um, <laughs> this is just fun. Just cutting it's, it out and mm-hmm. you can program it to work correctly, which I would eventually, uh, because I, I absolutely, mm-hmm. this is probably going to be a gift to someone that will absolutely tell time for the most part. <laughs> See, one of the things it needs to do, and I can't take credit for this idea, uh, but it's uh, at random times, it just drops some insults. It makes disparaging remarks about your mother or something nope. along those lines. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But you have to make it, like, rare enough or spotty enough, and it can't be there for far too long so that people's brains don't really register. It's like, did that really just say that? See, see, this is the difference between you and me. You want to mess with somebody. I want to emotionally scar them. (laughs) I just want to get into the back of people's minds and start, like... See, see, yeah, you, you put up an insult. My my clock's gonna be like, hey, it's four fourteen p.m. Don't try the cat. <laughs> and you know, maybe maybe a week later, it just says knock knock. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like just that random stuff. It's like you should lose some weight, and then it goes back to the time. It's like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if I had a wall clock that told me to lose some weight, I'd throw it away. I'm like, come on, who are you? Are you my boss? No, it's, that's just an example. But yeah, like something yeah. to really mess with people, but just like a blink and it's gone. <laughs> do you do some branch predictions after the initial, like, help me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you can throw in things to run on Linux, like RMRF. <laughs> The moral of the story, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, neither Pedro or myself are emotionally responsible enough to make one of these and or provide it to another human being. Aww. I mean, we would be capable of it. <laughs> I've actually adulted enough to know better. Aww. I know what I <laughs> It's just that we wouldn't be able to help ourselves. Jill, you like fuzzy Aww. clocks. Yes, I actually love fuzzy time clocks, and you this is a real one in IRL. Like a normal person. Oh, <laughs> well, I actually use you know like add-on in fire the fuzzy time clock add-on in Firefox, and but I've never seen one in, in IRL, so <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> and there's one in XFCE too that I've used on the clock. Do you, you don't use like the digital analog? <laughs> I use yeah, that sometimes... on XFCE all the time because it scales yeah. better with the panel. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah, and then and then there's the the issue with one of the clocks disappearing. Yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> so... especially if you put the panel vertically on the left side, it's like oh, yeah. th- it's just sideways now. Could we... Oh, yes. there we go. <laughs> that one works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just use the digital clock like a normal person. <laughs> Wristwatch. <Hipster>. There. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, my Chumbi uses fuzzy time as well. <laughs> I got two of those. It's nowhere near as dirty as it sounds. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, maybe you have a uh, 
digital clocks that are fuzzy and you want to tell us about it or maybe ask us a question thoughts some hints allegations stuff we can use on the show we would love to read your feedback and but it's impossible to do pedro oh yes and i'm very glad that you went with the fuzzy clocks instead of the other one because yeah my brain went places but hey if your brain has gone places and you'd like to let us know about it go to leaksgamecast.com and uh, hit the contact button Make sure to pick LWDW from the selection box and your name, your email, your subject. And yes, you can totally shave your clocks. <laughs> and uh, someone this week decided to get in touch with us to ask us a question. It's David and he's asking, what are your thoughts on using CentOS distribution for personal desktop? Oh, we had a talk about that on Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be good enough for browsing and music, right? Why do people recommend against it? Seems running a server distribution would be more secure. Cheers. And, Ven, you have things written down? Yeah. Well, Maybe. you know, it will be very stable and very <laughs> secure. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> I, I think it's great, actually. I've used CentOS and other server distros to surf the web. They're perfectly fine. You just won't get all the latest and, and greatest goodness from apps and whatnot and libraries. <laughs> there's a certain logic to it, but often with certain logic, there's also a certain bit of madness. Yes. <laughs> you could. That's a whole different. I was about to say, well, you could run up. Ubuntu server. It's like, ah, oh, it's, it's, uh, it's its own category of weird madness. Like, don't do that. Yes. Man, period. Um, uh, <laughs> I've run Debian server. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, Debian. Um, yeah. CentOS as a desktop would work and it'd probably be a little fresher than Debian stale. And yes. I will give you this <laughs> piece of advice for somebody who grew up with, not grew up with CentOS, but have used it and had to deal with it in environments for prolonged amount of periods, and it could really do a lot mm -hmm. to it. Nux Desktop, install that. Then nice. you get things like your media codex, and you can watch mm -hmm. TV, well, movie stuff, while you're supposed to be working, and uh, <laughs> that'll make your life a little easier. It, I don't know if it's necessarily going to be more secure, but... It's Linux. Basically, it's as secure as whatever other software you install on top of it mm. <laughs> yeah Quite possibly and mm -hmm. it's uh it, even if you want to play games uh negativo 17 yeah. has a repo for sent uh to let you install steam it comes with its own specially built uh version <laughs> of the redistributable client and all the necessary dependencies so yeah, that's games taken care of right what there. Life pro tip. If you walk into somebody's house and it's obvious that they're using they're like a scent desktop, old paper background, and they get to just walk out, man. Bad things are going to happen. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I've been so very curious about actually trying to get sent to like a gaming state Why? where it would be. Because yeah. it's not it, meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> it's not hard. This is not difficult. <laughs> yeah, but I kind of well, want to see just how good it would be. <laughs> yeah, because you can. And it's Linux, yeah. and that's the beauty of Linux. <laughs> that's also how you lose fingers, Jill. <laughs> see? Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> that's cruel. Don't laugh at him. No. <laughs> <laughs> On that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get out of here and roll some credits. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Little credits. Uh, Aww. <laughs> teeny tiny credits. Little teeny tiny credits. <laughs> thank you, Ben Stone. And thank you, Pedro Mateus. <laughs> and thank you, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to our beautiful executive producers. <laughs> that, that, our producers. That's an ever growing list. Yes. That e is even more of a growing list. You oh, Linux Gunneru. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Linux Gunneru and Linux Gunneru's dad for watching. That was wonderful. We enjoy having you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yay! Uh, LWDW, these... making it all the way to Tanzania. <laughs> <laughs> yes, awesome. The fiber baboons for the win. 